All of us die, but some of us die in more memorable ways. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. All right, listen, we're all gonna die someday. What? So, some of us are gonna go peacefully in our sleeps, but <laughs> others of us are gonna go in a more unusual way. Kick the bucket in an unusual way. That'll give us something to talk about. Are, and is that if a command? You, you just commanded the audience to yeah. kick a butt, kick a butt. Don't die. <laughs> kick a butt today. Kick a bucket. Sorry. <laughs> Not a butt. However you die, you could die from kicking a butt, I don't know. I don't know where that euphemism comes from. It doesn't exist. Well, let's start with some people who have died uh, and honor them <laughs> in a way that makes you all laugh. I'm sorry, that's just what's happening today. Let's start with Seeger the Mighty. He died in 892. That's, that's a, a long, long time, time ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the second Viking Earl of Orkney. Uh, that's not why he died. He was actually uh, helping to conquer parts of Northern Scotland where my people are from. Oh. So you hate this guy? Yeah, I hate him with a passion. I'm glad he's dead. Um, but during a, root, a routine battle against my people, as a trophy, he took one of my great, 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 great uncles who was just lying there dead on the battlefield, a McLaughlin maybe, I don't know, Scotsman, cut his head off as a trophy to take with him. Um, and I'm not talking about like one of those plastic soccer trophies that your kid got just for being on the team and doing nothing. I'm talking about- Ho, 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 I, ke I kept my soccer trophies until I moved out to California. Yeah, that says a lot about you <laughs> and, what, and what you have accomplished. Trophies are a good thing, unless they're like a Scotsman's head. It was a Scotsman's head, and Sigurd puts it on his saddle bag, and he starts whoop, 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 like Vikings running around all, well, on his horse, yeah, and then galloping they... away. And the teeth of my ancestor begin to scrape away at his leg. He gets an infection, and he dies. That's right. You can't hold my people down. Cut off our heads, and we'll bite you with our zombie teeth. Wow. And your leg while you're on your horse. I mean, how bad does your dental hygiene have to be that when your severed head is scraping up against the leg of your conqueror, that it kills him? Well, we're not known for our dental hygiene. <laughs> That's not what we're known for. Our dental hygiene. We're known, we're known for our character and our integrity. Can I bring it to 1993? You can. Well, that's that's too soon. I'm a bring. No, it's not. Okay. Not not for this guy. It's over 20 years. Gary Hoy was a senior partner at a law firm. Firm, just a friendly lawyer. Yeah. I mean, look at this picture. This is his like law firm portrait. Yeah. Just a normal guy, except that he apparently also wore eyeliner. Hmm. I don't know. Whatever he, makes you he's, happy. He's a lawyer. He knows the rules. He can do whatever he wants. One of the things that he liked to do was he had a party trick that he did frequently at the office. I'll call it an office trick. Okay. Uh, he's on the. He's got a great office, 24th floor of the TD Center building in Toronto. Uh, one day, some college students, like law students come by, yeah. and he wants to pull out his office trick, and he likes to prove that the glass in his window will not break. Okay. So. And how does he do that? He runs at it, and he hurls himself at the window, boom, and bounces off of it. So oh. see, <laughs> my, my window is unbreakable. That's see, a great they, trick. They, it, this is a safe office. But I'm I, guessing it doesn't go well. And I'm pretty well. cool. I'm guessing this trick backfired. We wouldn't be talking about him if that was not the case. He No, he does it, everything's fine. And I guess the college students were impressed, and then he decides to do it again. Oh. They weren't impressed enough. Two times a charm, he takes his 160 pound body and goes against the glass a second time to prove that it will not break. And he goes overboard, woo, Gary Hoy! Died, 1993. <laughs> Died. There he goes. So he, it broke, so the window broke. He finally. fell to his death, but in fairness, uh, the window did not break. He did, oh! not, he did not go through the window, the whole thing, popped out. Oh, well, then he's still right. He like surfed it he's down. He's still right in his death. Right. I'm I sure told you it wouldn't break! It didn't break. But it did shatter. Finish law school, you can be like me! Okay, speaking of another lawyer, Clement L. Vallandigham, he died in 1871. Vallandigham, that's Va right, isn't Vallandigham. it? Vallandigham. Yeah, he was a lawyer in Ohio in the 1800s. Uh, very, very successful, just Lawyers like Gary, Gary Hoy. Accident prone. And. Uh, but he was uh, in the middle of proving his client's innocence. His client had been accused of murdering another guy by shooting him. Uh, but he said, no, no, my client is innocent because actually when the victim was drawing his gun to shoot my client, okay. he shot himself in the chest. 
And, he, and like any great lawyer, he said, let me demonstrate. Here's the good news, he won the case. Here's the bad news. During the demonstration, he actually shot himself in the chest. Great job, Clement. This is he, so, but, hey, but he won the case. Yeah. I mean, this is a man who's committed to his craft. And this is so ironic because, I mean, he he's generated so much more work for himself. It's yeah. like, he won the case and he's, right. br he's brilliant. Best lawyer ever, let what me a, tell you about what him. What a brilliant maneuver, except, of course, he's dead. Yeah, yeah, That's right. what makes he it ironic. Take action on it. Yeah, I mean, he could be the poster child for irony, you know, if he were alive to be a, the poster child. Well, we'll look into you could that, be the de Can you be dead and be the poster child? What kind of legal documents do you have to sign in order to become the poster child? I think it just kind of happens. I think you're the sub. You just it happens to you. Are there certain lawyers who, if they're not dead, you have to consult before becoming a poster child? What is a poster child? I don't can know. I, ask Gary Hoy. Can I talk about Alex Mitchell? He's a British bricklayer. Please. I'm do a that. British bricklayer. My name is Alex Mitchell. Uh, Norfolk, England. Sounds nothing like that. Of course, he's dead, so he doesn't sound <laughs> at all. Start, let's start there. This is 1975. He he comes home from a hard day of laying bricks. Okay. And you got to blow off some steam. You got to you know you got to do your masonry thing at right. home, which is watch British sketch comedy. And he watched a show called The Goodies, um, hmm. which is basically an imitation of Monty Python as far as much as guy can gather. But he was watching a particular episode entitled The Battle of Ekithon. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, I'm gonna show this hilarious comedy sketch to you right now. Oh wow, that's funny. Look at that, how funny that is. Dancing bagpipe. Oh, money. Oh, it's a boomerang. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm not so sure this is a comedy sketch. This might be archival footage of that time that Amish guy, was attacked by that bagpack guy. Bagpack. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't have been a great observation if you would have correctly pronounced bagpipe. No, it wouldn't. Anyway. Have. Right. No, I think this is an extremely uh, precise form of comedy just called uh, uh, bagpipe slapstick. Oh. I think that's what this is. I'm not a fan. And I'm not into it, but Alex Mitchell evidently was very this into was it. This was his jam. He, yes, he starts. Oh yeah, there it is again. He started, give oh, me that yeah. bagpipe slapstick. <laughs> and then he's. Ah, oh, the boomerang's he back. Starts, oh man. He starts Woo. laughing. He laughs for 25 minutes, laughs, 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 until he dies. He dies from this, it killed him. <laughs> he did. What well, we just watched. He dies killed him. from it. It killed him. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Think about that. You're exactly right. Well, I gotta say, I feel good about this. It's not in one sad. Sense. No, it's the guy died doing what he loves in the middle of a laugh attack. I mean, if I were to hear that there was a person out there watching Good Mythical Morning laughing so hard and they died, I'd be like, great. In fact, if that happens, <laughs> if you die from watching Good Mythical Morning, and it's not from doing something stupid that we do, but it's just from laughing, we will officiate your funeral. Yeah, I'll, you play, I'll play taps on the trumpet. It will sound I'll horrible. play the bagpipes, and I can't even do it. I'll bring a boomerang. Hey, 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 that's, no. Nope. Double five? No, no, no we're not let's just do wave that. at each other. Uh, his wife wrote a letter to the stars of the show thanking them for making his last 30 minutes so enjoyable. So don't feel bad for Alex. Okay, one more. Got to hear about Hans Steininger. He died in 1567. This guy was known for having one of the longest beards in the world, over five feet long. They didn't have photography back then, but we have this amazing photographic, realistic recreation, so you can get an idea of what he looked like. Handsome, handsome devil. If you looked like that, I would actually listen to you. Oh, really? And believe See, I would the claims wise. that you made. Well, let me tell you what happened to this dude. Okay, his beard was so long that he kept it in a little leather pouch, like a fanny beard pack. Really? Yeah, right there on his face. I don't know where it was, actually. Did it top? been down here. Uh, and there was a fire in his town, and he forgot to fanny pack his beard. Forgot to fanny pack his beard. That was a mistake because while running from the fire, he tripped on his long beard and broke his neck. He okay. whiplashed himself with his own beard and broke his neck. I thought you were gonna say he tripped on his beard and then got burned up in a fire. No, he broke his neck, whiplash. That's amazing. I mean, the dude was running fast. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I, I want to Mythbusters this thing. Like, I that has to be tested. 
I don't think by you, by the MythBusters, okay. not by us. Well, you can't do that. Link. I'm not gonna do You're it. You're not one of them. No, I am not. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. But if any of you do it, um, and you die, we are not going to officiate your funeral because we are not condoning oh, yeah, the yeah, stepping yeah, on yeah, of yeah. beards don't, and whiplashing don't grow your beard heads. That. Do not do that for us. We're not gonna be a part of it. But I would like to announce my new line of fanny beard packs. <laughs> you got your beard has to get a lot longer before you. Uh, Fanny beard Grow into up. it. That's the fanny, motto. I just said fanny beard it. <laughs> that's the we'll verb. We'll work on the slogan. That's the verb. <laughs> fanny beard it. 1995. Uh, oh gosh. All right. Reminisce about uh, you know awesome deaths in the comments if you want to. Thanks for liking and commenting. You know what time it is. I'm Mary. I'm Lauren. We're from Denver, Colorado, and it's, it's time, time to, to spin, spin the wheel of mythicality. You can get the GMM Rentlink bobbleheads at rentlink.com slash store. And you can also take a picture of them somewhere in the world and hashtag it with GMM bobble and we will feature it on this show. Take us with you everywhere. Click through to Good Mythical More where I've got an amazingly odd double death story for you. Bing, 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 bing. Congratulations to at MythicalBeast21. You and a personal GMM. Jorts are hard to pull off, man. I, the only person I can think of who can pull off jorts is probably uh, at Mythical Beast Twenty One. I know. Every time I see at Mythical Beast Twenty One in jorts, right? I'm like, those jorts look good on at Mythical Beast Twenty One. Yep. You Reference to, to know him. him. You, could, you know what? He could do the voice for my fanny pack. I wonder if he my wears beard? a mask like a fanny my pack. fanny beard pack. <laughs> okay. Beard fanny pack. That's what I should call it.